Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If this is your first time finding my channel, hi, welcome, I'm Stacy, and I do these Tacky Tuesdays every single week. And it's basically where we do a mini EMS cardiology lesson. And today we're going to be talking about second degree type 2 heart blocks. So just like we always do, let's go ahead and start with a definition. A second degree type 2 AV block, also referred to as a Mobitz 2, is typically the result of a diseased distal conduction system in the ventricles, specifically the Hisperkinji system. We have done a video on a second degree type 1 heart block, and if you haven't seen it, I'll go ahead and link it up in the right hand corner. But this heart block is a bit more serious than the type 1 or the Mobitz 1, and that is mainly because it is closer to turning into a complete heart block. Or a third degree heart block. Make sure you tune into next week's video. I am going to go into the complete heart block. Let's talk about some of the characteristics of a second degree type 2. So let's first start with the rate. The atrial rate is faster than the ventricular rate, which tends to be bradycardic because some of the impulses are blocked. The regularity. It is regularly irregular, so it is an irregular rhythm, but there is some method and regularity to the madness. Your P waves are normal and upright, but there are more P waves than there are QRS complexes. Like I said, Said the impulses are blocked. Your PR interval is typically normal but it can be prolonged or elongated and your QRS complexes are less than 0.12 seconds but in some Mobitz 2 heart blocks they can be very wide so it just kind of depends. And y'all don't worry we will take a look at this on a strip that way you guys can kind of see more or less what I'm talking about. All right and I always like to go into the different causes and risk factors for whatever condition I'm going over. Some of them are repeats but some of them are very specific to this type of heart block or this type of condition. So some of the causes and risk factors of a second degree type 2 or a Mobitz 2 is a recent cardiac surgery and also an acute myocardial infarction that maybe is happening right now or maybe one that's happened in the past. And the reason for these two different causes or risk factors is because a myocardial infarction and a cardiac surgery can cause conduction abnormalities. It can be due to scar tissue or it can be due to a current, like I said, infarct of the heart. Also, also, autoimmune diseases like Lyme disease can cause a second degree type 2, electrolyte imbalances, specifically hyperkalemia, congenital heart defects, infections like endocarditis, pericarditis, and medications and toxins can also cause second degree type 2s. Some of the signs and symptoms that you may be able to expect with somebody experiencing a second degree type 2 are chest pain, shortness of breath, weakness, um, that kind of goes into syncope or dizziness, fainting, flutters or palpitations palpitations in the chest and nausea and vomiting. So let's take a look at it on a strip. And this strip was generated using 12leadtrainer.com. And if you guys haven't checked out 12leadtrainer.com, you need to. I'm not sponsored or anything, but it's an amazing site. And so I'm definitely going to leave their link down in the description box below. So definitely go check them out. All right, so let's go over some of the features of the Mobitz 2 on the 12 lead. I'm going to put arrows to the extra P waves and just some of the features of it really quick. So give me one second. Okay, here we have some arrows and they are pointing to your P waves that are not followed by a QRS complex. So those specific P waves are where the impulses are blocked. If they weren't blocked, then the ventricles would do its thing and produce a QRS complex. So then you can look where I put normal conduction and I just basically put that because there is a P wave, there is a QRS complex, and there is a T wave. It happens three times in a row and then once again, bam, you have that P wave that's just off by itself. And you can see the P wave to P wave intervals pretty much march out on a Mobitz type 2, but your QRS to QRS does not march out. And you can take a look at your PR interval, and on this specific strip, it is normal, and so are your QRSs. They don't appear to be wide. The rate on this, I, I think it ended, it ended up being about 58 beats per minute, but you can definitely tell your atrial rate is faster than your ventricular rate. And with these types of heart blocks, they can actually actually be extremely, extremely slow. So whenever we talk about the treatments here in a moment, I'll show a different strip. So let's actually, let's just jump right into some of the possible EMS treatments. Before I go into the EMS treatments, make sure you follow your protocol and stay within your scope of practice. But you can get a 12 lead. Obviously, that's what's going to tell you that they have a second degree type 2. You can obtain vitals, get an IV, obtain a blood draw possibly for your hospital if that's something that you guys do, and treat your patient. What's their complaint? How are they 
presenting? Are they extremely bradycardic? Are they extremely symptomatic? Are they conscious? Are they unconscious? Treat your patient. You can administer oxygen, atropine if the patient is bradycardic and symptomatic, but typically with a heart block, it is ineffective. And as always, transcutaneous pacing if the patient is bradycardic and symptomatic. Sometimes these patients, they are going to the hospital basically to have a pacemaker put in and the hospital will have to send them off to surgery. So transcutaneous pacing may actually be what EMS has to administer meanwhile. All right, guys, that's about all I have for second degree type two. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.